Oh, it's really hard to start a video off when you got a bunch of parts and metal shoved in your hands and you're trying to get the lights on. Looks good. That means we're back for another video, right? Kinda, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, doing stuff one-handed that is not meant to be done one-handed. So let's go ahead and get the camera set the way it's supposed to be. Now we can start with a, how you guys doing? Average Joe Builds, what's up? <laughs> so, today, we have lots of parts. We'll set these down, and if you follow me, we have even more parts. We're not gonna talk about the parts yet, because we gotta take other parts off to put parts on, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, in here, nothing is different. Parts, as far as the eye can see, boxes full. I've just been cleaning. Um, somehow I put different color lights up, which I'm an idiot. Pile of trash I need to clean because I've been just working my butt off. The bathroom is officially done. I have to run some caulk lines and stuff like that. Which though, lets me actually get back to the point where I can start filming videos again. Cause you gotta make wifey happy to keep yourself happy. So I have been Focusing on, look at me just kicking trash. I've been focusing on getting her stuff out of the way so I can go back to worrying about my own stuff, which sounds super selfish. So with all of her stuff finally coming to an end and me getting to a point where I can work on my own stuff again, I have actually been coming out here and cleaning up this mess, slowly but surely getting it to a point that when I do start to work on the S10 again, I can just plop the motor in. This is Envoy's motor that I gotta swing out front. Um, I did go ahead and off camera chop the rack mount and find a piece that I can slug it with to give me a properly straight line on my rack. It's all stuff we'll talk about when the S10 gets back to its time. <laughs> when, I, uh, when I can take my two hands and go back to just working on that, which is really hard for me to do considering I have so many projects inside the house, outside the house, etc. But with all that, let's get to the square body and fixing what we broke last time out in the snow. If you're new here, on the last video, we did take the square body out for its first snow run. Um, nothing majorly broke, it did a fantastic. Uh, big block truck in the 40s, you know, in a locker. Can't really go wrong in the snow there. The one issue is my steering box started to work its way loose and showed a couple problems because of that. We're gonna be diving into that today and while you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there if you haven't, and let's go on. Let's have some fun, join in, and break some stuff probably in the process. <laughs> Never, never put your finger between the spindle and the 40 when you're rocking it off to get it off. Like in here, never put your finger right there because you will squish it and there will be blood under your nail. A lot of it and it will hurt. Owie. So, peeking in here, the main thing we need to dive into is, okay, I don't know if this is going to be visible on camera at all, but, oh, yeah. I'm assuming that's pretty visible on camera. That ear is broken clean off. I mean, you can hear it. The box is just all wobbly. Um, one of the things we're gonna be doing is deleting the rag joint as well. But, like I said, less talk, more work. Let's get the uh, GoPro head cam on and start pulling things apart, I guess.
Okay, now we're back in the garage getting stuff figured out. Uh, hopefully that time lapse, you can see the steering box fall on top of my head after crushing my finger. It's been one of those days. One of those days. But we're gonna go over what's been happening. We pulled the steering box off. We pulled the steering uh, rod, shaft, can't even think of the word. I'm feeling some Tweety Birds going around so I have to have steering box. But uh, so steering shaft is removed, steering box is removed while I was in there. Off camera, I did pull one of the kingpin uh, springs with the white plastic spacer out so we could check that out. So with that, far from stock store, like we said, we have a new spicer bushing, a spacer, and then this guy, that is going to be new, old, probably okay, don't care, I'm going to replace it with good stuff. <laughs> this is not okay. So what we're going to do is, oh, I can barely pick this up, and this fell on my head so flip this around ah uh, now we can see something's missing over here yeah that uh, broke off oh and it was a reband box too that sucks but uh quick harbor freight trick trip will get me a pitman arm puller pull this guy off we did listen to our subscribers as usual and replace it with a redhead quick ratio box. They gave me new O-rings and everything, so that will be great. And then stock steering shaft, pulled that guy off quick and easy. Um, Ragdoint, sketchy, hate these, don't like them, big tires, get rid of it. This guy, I just, I don't even, would you just explain to a guy? <laughs> That's just gross. So, uh, it's like an Axi Omnid, uh, it's a stock XJ steering shaft. It's just the same joint and the same spline as this guy. It collapses in the center here. Uh, I've heard there's some plastic that I may have to heat up to get this to extend and collapse a little bit easier to get it on the truck, but we're roughly in the same shape, so deal with that. But we'll do a quick harbor freight trip right now. Huh? Oh, that hurt the hurt finger. Oh, that hurt. Now that is how you harbor freight truck. So, what we're gonna do is set this yonder. Gotta make sure stuff's clean. Gotta make sure stuff has grease. And gotta break stuff loose like this. So, what we're gonna do. I didn't have a pitman arm puller, surprisingly. I thought I did, but I didn't. Just destroy this box. Because, you know, returning it's never a thing. And take this big guy, set it like that. End up going something like this. Nothing but thing. See, a lot of people talk crap on Harbor Freight stuff. I mean, it's not the best. I mean, it's probably a similar condition to my camera because of dropping it 70 times, but whatever. Uh, yeah, blasted that guy right off.
the day two of this video. On the day two. For day two. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, last night kicked my butt. After dropping a steering box on my head, smashing my finger, I just... Oh, I couldn't. I just... I went in the house, I hung out, drank a little bit, and grabbed at the bathroom. Got that stuff done for wifey. Uh, woke up early today, got some more stuff cleaned up in the bathroom, finished up. Uh, came out here, was reading the Far From Stock Kingpin Spring Eliminator Kit instructions. That's a mouthful. Um, and I'm an idiot. So, they give you a new Spicer Kingpin bushing. They also give you a Spring Eliminator out of Delrin. And they give you a spacer. Off camera yesterday, I threw the spacer in the middle. That got like that. And assembled it. No big deal. No problem. Everything went great. It's not how it's supposed to go together, guys. Uh, the spacer is required if you need... Uh, basically, there's supposed to be a preload set for the turning resistance on the knuckles and that's what the spacer is for. Um, you're using a fish scale to look for 20 to 25 pounds of resistance. Um, yeah, I just slapped it all together and I can tell it's going to be a really stiff turn. So we're going to pull the driver's side apart real quick. We're going to pull this out and just throw it back together like that, which let's see, might not be such a big pain if we just grab this and go find out. But while we're over here, we're gonna check out. Did finish up welding and painting the off-road designs. Frame plate last night. So this is all done. Just goes in the existing spot, holes. We do get a bottom plate. Buzzed it all in there, threw some undercoating on it. But this is where we are going and what we are going to pull, so. Quick. 19. just like that and now it's pulled apart get that back together so now let's get a box back on change these o-rings do that side and go for a test drive I'd say on the last clip uh, I went ahead got the box all tightened up new o-rings on the lines and stuff through the bolts right there for the steering shaft don't let me forget yeah I watched too much street speed 717 <sighs> t-rex vibes so now last thing to do box tight on snug this off camera caught a pin good all this is tight everything's lined back up still straight where we need to go. So what we have to do is get this on flat and then peek over and we see too long. You'd think it doesn't work, but these shafts 
shafts, shafts. The shaft is collapsible. I'm caught on that hood spring. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this back off. So, like I was saying before, this is an XJ, you know, like an 86 to 93 uh, Jeep Cherokee uh, steering shaft. Deletes the factory rag joint that this garbage had, which mine was all ripped on one side, and then the ugly attachment at the top. Since steering shafts are collapsible, you see right here, uh, in case of an accident so you don't catch this guy to the chest and die or anything like that. That didn't look cool. I'm not going to do that again. So we're going to go ahead and get you guys set up real quick for a little bit of good old fashioned heat and beat. Just starts raining always. And I'm getting my butt kicked and it's just one of those days. Uh, go ahead, get this guy filled up. I gotta cycle it around, make sure. I didn't have to beat the crap out of this thing and as you guys probably saw in the time lapse and stuff, it is a little more heating and beating than I was expecting. Um, to be honest, it'd be a lot easier if they just told, this is a thing I saw on forums and stuff like that. They said the heat and extend, you know. And I had to collapse it a quarter inch, three eighths. No, wait, quarter, durr, half inch or three eighths. I don't know. My brain is fried after that. That sucked. But uh, it probably would have been easier to loosen the steering column and slide the column back and then set the column back down on that. You might need a second pair of hands, you know, a little help, but it would have been a lot easier. The nice thing is now, though, no movement. I mean, barely any movement. That starts wiggling. So I want to get the wheels on. I got the far from stock stuff in, slammed in. I got this tight. Lines are tight. Pitman arm is slammed on with the half inch fuel. That's all good. Peek up here. Everything looks good. I need to clean this mess up that I've made with wiring. But yeah, cycle this guy back and forth a few times. Ooh, made a little bit of a mess. Yeah. And find myself a rag. There's nothing big to deal with. Get this little bit of power steering. I've just spilt cleaned up, but otherwise. This is not a bad modification. Should be good, should be good. Let's go ahead and get fired up. Down you go. Get this. Out of there. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen. What do you know? What? that for b-roll for sure but no leaks everything seems good let's go for a test ride okay music down and let's go for our first test drive right pray to god nothing is wrong nothing falls off i know i tightened everything so we should be good there realistically the only thing i'm worried about is i know my steering wheel is not going to be straight but that's something I'll fix in a little bit. It's no biggie. Okay. Don't run into the wifey's car because I get my butt kicked. steering wheel is 90 degrees off that's no biggie it's actually better when it's 90 like that because that is a definite spline adjustment easy quick simple not an issue to fix boys and girls um, Kevin down in Portland at Dirty Hands Garage. He has the same steering box. Oh, I wasn't in third gear. He has the same steering box in his, uh, it's like a 
70, I want to say 72, 73 Chevy van that's four wheel drive swapped. He has a Kingpin 60 in the front as well, uh, redhead box just like this one. And um, he told me that it has a little bit of a problem returning to center. His is just tight. It's not a bad thing, it's just a little bit tight. I think mine's gonna, it feels like it's gonna be like that. I mean, everything else feels fantastic. It doesn't, it's not wandering. Uh, this, no hands and I'm going straight down the road still. I mean, wow. It didn't do that before. Ooh. I'm gonna try and fit on this road with this car. Gotta let people through when you're the monster truck on the road, jeez. Oh, she had to turn in her driveway. Yeah, I mean, this is fantastic. I love this truck again. Uh, after that snow run, it was a little sketchy driving at home, so. But now I think we should be just about perfect. Everybody's staring at the big old girl. Yes, it's large. I know. I don't hear any. Here, let's get this open. I don't hear any funny bangs, clicks, chunks, smacks, knocks. Anything normal, you know. Not normal. This thing is, you know, it's a leaf sprung old Chevy pickup, so it doesn't make its fair share of noise by itself. because this is too funny. We're not dying. Look at that. I can see you got finger guns. Oh, metal finger still hurts. Oh, dude, this is so, so much better. Actually, I can wipe you to switch me spots. Holy crap, boys and girls. We fixed the truck. have that we got that done um driving that truck now is fantastic i can do 40 50 down the road with no hands on the steering wheel that's a good sign it's a leaf sprung crew cab square body on 40s and i don't have to fight the steering wheel all the way down the road so you know i love that um sitting here looking down boy i did start to get a little sad so i think i'm gonna clean up a bunch of this mess and drag the motor from here to behind the S10, I'll put it in the back of the wife's Envoy, and then I'll carry the cherry picker through here, drive the Envoy, unload the motor, get it in the garage. Um, I need to throw the pickup O-ring on it, replace the oil pan gasket real quick so I know those are both new, then I can actually sling it in here, put the harness back on, and get the Envoy going again. Once Envoy runs and drives, the plan is to sell it, focus on other stuff, S10 crew cab. God, I love that thing, I just can't stop staring at it. it look at the profile of it behind the Envoy. It's just such a big truck. <laughs> I love that thing. But like I said, um, uh, 
huge thank you to Redhead Steering Gears, Far From Stock Store. Uh, they're fantastic companies, Rough Stuff Specialties, hooking us up with all these goodies and helping us go. Um, keeping the crew cab alive, keeping the crew cab going, keeping me motivated to get these things going. This little black guy right here, this long boy, he needs some love. So I'm going to get that motor in today, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to work right off camera as soon as I'm done editing this. And S10, he gets stuff next because we have all this stuff ready. So with that, uh, if you haven't liked any of the past videos, go ahead and give me some suggestions. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, let a friend know. Tell two friends. I don't care. Tell your friend and tell a friend. With that, though, we're going to let you go. Average Joe Builds, out.